workaholic. You, you, you shot a film, you, you finished your album, now you're, you're flying through, through the globe um, pr promoting your album, and at the same time you're also an entrepreneur. How does all that function? Uh, man, you just gotta stay busy, man. For me, I'm doing what I, I love, you know, but because I enjoy what I'm doing, I, I do it at a higher pace than they've seen before. You know what I mean? I'm just ambitious and I always create new goals for myself and work towards them. When I started before I self destruct, initially I, w I started it during the Curtis album cycle. And I wrote five songs. It was just outlines, roughs. Actually, one of the songs that was supposed to go on Curtis was a song called A Mechanic. And I released it on the mixtapes. You know what I mean? But that, like one of those ideas, I wrote uh, five two verse songs. And uh, then I just decided I'd write the Curtis album. That concept came and I wanted to put that first. Because that was like an artist album where I would collaborate with other artists to see if I could find a, a new space, something creatively different. And I did it. I felt like I've accomplished it with. AO Technology with Justin Timberlake. You know, it went on, you can't ask for bigger than number one, you know what I mean? So, the record went on to be a number one record in a lot of different countries. So, I feel good about it, you know. And someone from Belgium actually covered the song. I'm sure you. Right, heard. right. They, they did it over. And, and that was interesting. For me, when I heard the cover, and it was big too, it was a successful project, you know what I mean? So, when they did it, I was like, yo, that that's, that's hot. Um, when's the last time you played such an intimate show? It's been on this promo. This promo I've been I've done uh well I was one one show. It was like a comedy club that was pretty small. And I mean it feels good. Like and it's almost like a uh it's like a chance to test some of my new ideas. Yeah, so, so tonight's actually like the, the European premiere of Before Self Before Self Destruct Lab. before and it's I mean it's a brief performance. It's not like what I would do on uh on the big stage, like in the stadiums and stuff, but you know, it'd definitely be entertaining. You added the full length film to your DVD in, in Europe and in, uh, in the US copy, I think, that was the movie right. uh, with um, Jam Master J. Yeah. Um, why was it switched for the territories? Or well, initially, the, the rights for two turntables and a microphone with Jam Master J was negotiated for the US. And then, you know, outside of that, they're getting ready to distribute that as a straight-to-DVD project in all of the other territories. But the film, Before I Self-Destruct, was written based on the actual album, so it was necessary for me to release it within the actual album packaging because I wanted my music fans to have a full perspective and vision of what I was trying to create on this actual album. And because songs are three minutes long, I can only give you descriptions. What did the, the Sugar Hill gang say about, about it? Well, obviously, you got to clear the sample. So they were okay with yeah, it? Yeah, they were okay with it. And it's just, it's changing, you know, the whole, the vibe, because of production difference. Mm -hmm. and, she, and it's like a fusion of that old vibe that I fell in love with and the new style that I have now, so. I like it. It's one of the songs yeah. I also picked out to, to get into, because it has that old school flavor in it. Uh -huh. it's, it's well done. Um, where did you record the majority of your album? Well, I was all over the place. You know, I, I recorded some in Shreveport, Louisiana, mm -hmm. while I was uh, filming Streets of Blood with Val Kilmer and Sharon Stone. And that project, that's where I actually was inspired to write the screenplay for Before I Self Destruct. So that was written in Shreveport also. And I recorded in Detroit mm -hmm. for, for two weeks, two, on two separate occasions. I went for a week, then I left, and I came back for a week. And this is during the period that Dr. Dre is in Detroit with him recording Relapse. Mm -hmm. And I'll just come in and see what they're doing and pick things out of what they were doing, you know, and go in the other room and write. Because we had three rooms. Mm -hmm. And uh, I recorded in Las Vegas. Okay. Outside of my house, that was the only three places that we I recorded. So in Connecticut, you recorded? Yeah, little pieces. and Just getting started because, I, like I said, I, I had started before I self-destruct, before Curtis, mm -hmm. and then went into that concept and said, I'm going with this next, and then I'll get back to before I self-destruct. Whose idea was it to sample Baby By Me from, from I Get Money? That idea was actually Polo's idea. Okay. You know, it was his favorite line off of I Get Money. When I walked into the studio, I was already playing. You know, it's common to sample material 
within hip hop culture, but not common for an artist to sample himself. You know, so when I heard it, I was like, listened to it, and I thought about it a little bit. I said, this is cool, this is different. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I wrote the chorus. The song has two choruses, actually, because it has that, and then it has the portion that Neo performs on the actual record. I wrote a different chorus and then sent it to Neo, and he made the changes to make himself uh, the best he could possibly be on the record. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and how did that come about, that you guys worked together? Right? I just made the phone call, okay. you know, and he, he actually did it. Just a great collaboration, good idea. Mm -hmm. um, well, Michael passed, unfortunately, this year, and y y you have the track, uh, Then Days Went By, with a sample from Ain't No Sunshine. Right. Um, did, were you, did, were you ever, uh, did you ever meet Michael Jackson, or how did he influence you? Or? Well, I didn't actually meet him. He met Who Kid. My DJ and he uh, was talking about us working together at some point, mm -hmm. but we never had a chance to work or communicate with each other directly. It was more of just reaching out to see whether I'd be willing to do something. Mm -hmm. um, one of the tracks I really like is "So Disrespectful." Yeah, is that maybe gonna be a single or? It'll be. Uh, there will be a visual for it. You know, uh, the record is working by itself. That one, you know, like it just plays with no assistance from the record company because people like it and they took it, you know, personally enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But I, I wrote that record about uh, people that I've had issues with that were pretty cool or, or at some point I felt like they crossed me, mm -hmm. you know, so I wrote those different things and it came out good, like, you know, people enjoy it. Well, usually people that mess with you in, in some way, uh, they get burnt real fast. I mean, if you take the Jerule, you take uh, Fat Joe or The Game, their sales go down, they kind of... Yeah, and I mean, you know what it is? They damage themselves. Because mm -hmm. uh, you you put yourself in direct competition with someone who has a higher consistency than you. And then the fans make a choice. Mm -hmm. And they go, I like him better than him. Then. Mm -hmm. And then they don't even... Like, they stunt their growth. At a different point, sometimes artists, you know, they come to compete to try and build a, a higher profile for themselves. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work. Like, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If you ran into somebody, if you got a real issue with this person, then I could see you, uh, I don't even see you writing it then. I see you going to do the other things mm -hmm. if you have a problem. You see what I'm saying? But if you had issues... I would you would have to at least have contact or have someone create some type of discomfort mm -hmm. before you start to display the disrespect. It's just them conditioning themselves to feel like they can actually compete. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's like you go in the gym day two, you turn in to be a fight. Your coach is calling you champ. Mm -hmm. It does not mean you can fight the pound for pound best fighter in your weight class. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not yeah. ready, but yeah. he's still calling you champ to condition you. To be able to fight even under circumstances when you lose it, so mm -hmm. you can keep going. Yeah. I just want to jump over to This Is Fifty, the website, because I mean, I, you're not only successful musically or with your films or with your other projects, but I mean, that's something a, a site people actually go to get information. Right. How, how do you run that? This is fifty dot com. Is it's not actually me. You know, there's a, a staff there that's actually orchestrating what they see every day, and that's why it's not biased. That's why it has the negatives, positives, and everything that has any involvement with hip-hop culture. And that's why the site has grown to the point that it's 30 million unique views per month. You know, and it's getting bigger and better. Mm -hmm. um, how do you celebrate Christmas? Usually, I'm playing Santa Claus. Mm 